Good evening, Free Enterprise fans, and welcome to tonight's rates versus of Scratch Dragon versus Pancras. My name is Baka Shinobi, and I am joined by Gundam Pilot Spaz. How are you doing this evening? Oh, I'm very excited, Baka. We're into the lunar table stage. The matches so far have been fantastic, and we have a lot of races that's still in front of us, so I'm I'm nothing but ecstatic. Oh, I agree, and I see something to be real excited about. We have a Cecil start. Because of the changes of the from the groups to the table flags, we have Permajoin on. That means this Cecil we start with, you're keeping no matter what. It's that's about the most trolly start you could get. Maybe maybe Edward being the exception. Edward is a terrifying start because of those Edward strats, which we will probably see more of because one of the big changes I mean, okay, one of there's a bunch of big changes for cable flags, the permajoin, the change from T Pro T Wildish to T Pro, the change from S standard to S Pro, and just the general fact that sirens are not gonna be available pretty much anywhere except for Cole Smith because you can no longer steal them from the alerts. Yeah, a lot of uh, our viewers are probably still getting used to these flags and the differences between our group stage, but uh, there's a very subtle ways that make these flags a lot more challenging. And that the the one that's the one that always uh, always catches me is just how poor the loot is on table flags versus group. Group uh, the group stage, you're able to pull some legendary weapons out of normal chests. In the uh, in the table stage, you're lucky if you walk out with even uh, with even like tier six gear at the end of it. In Table Flags, Ograx has been promoted to Legendary Weapon. And with, as we ha still had in the group stage, we have the Vanilla Agility Flag on, which means that Cecil will be your anchor. You can get in a second Cecil to go and make them a secondary anchor, so you can switch between the two. But you're either going to have to go and get a Curse String and just tank that Cecil and not let him do much of anything. Or you're going to have to play with fair agility if you level Cecil up. Both of which are uh, pretty scary propositions when you're already behind the eight ball with that drop in power. Yeah, I mean, with a Dark Knight Cecil start, there's there's a couple of scary things that you're going to run into, including lack of power, bad agility uh, early on. But Baco, like, who who do you think would be the optimal character to get right here as uh, as our second start? Sid is my bet. He is high leveled. He comes with good stats. He can use a lot of equipment. He can put on a lot of equipment. He can use bows to be easily back or glitch. Sid really goes and helps his team just get through the early game. Next second choice would be Palum for me. Who would your choice be? Uh, would like to see an early, or always like to get the white mage out of the way quick uh, on these flags, <laughs> just so I don't have to worry about it. That I can understand because white mages are very important and. Scratch Dragon saying yes to Yang, uh, Pancras saying no to Yang. So this is another big difference with Permajoin on. You are free to go and say no to characters. You're not required to pick them up. And we have changed from group flags where we had CB C by on there, where if you dismiss a the character, they were gone. In table, we decided that would be just more tedious and annoying to deal with than anything. So characters who dismiss will go to the Tower of Wishes in the city. I think Once more than... Right. No, I think more than anyone, I've seen people kind of disagree about the utility of Yang because he early game, low level, he starts off hitting really, really poorly. But at the end of the game, he has high HP and he's he's doing a lot of damage without having to get any weapons. Yeah, for me, when I'm looking at characters early on, I am looking for who's helping me right now, especially if I'm starting with a Cecil. Cecil is going to go and have a hard time doing much. He Blackster will go and let him do get through the early game well enough, but you need to find one first. That Rosa is definitely going to be a solid add to the team because, hey, there's your white mage. Yeah, no hesitation in adding Rosa to to, to his team on Pancras' side. Yeah, it's going to be very hard to ever hesitate to pick up Rosa because, as you say, white mages are a pretty big deal on these flags. Yeah, and the only disadvantage Rosa has over over uh, Orum is just that she doesn't learn a natural exit, which can slow you down. But we're going to be looking for a Tella anyway, so that's and we have a Cecil anyway, so that's probably less of a less of a concern. Yeah, that's uh, Cecil is going to be able to go and take himself out of go and learn exit after we complete Matter of Deal, so that's going to be less of an issue. 
I do wonder if our runners gonna be paying are gonna be trying to spend extra time leaving slots open in the hopes of getting a second Cecil at the expense of some other characters. Yeah, I mean, but one one bonus we have to this to this table flag is that unlike in group, when you dismiss a character as you found them, they're gone forever. Here, we can we can keep dismissing characters and then pick them up uh, in the city and later on. So even if we leave a couple em empty character slots, uh, we can always fill them in um, at the end. And we can even toss them in the Tower of Wishes saying, come join us. No, no, actually, not really. No, no, really. Come join us. No, 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 don't really. You just keep talking back and forth with them. It's not helpful, but you can feel mean about it. Eh, it might eat up your clock a little bit there, Buck. Is that me? Unless you're playing on hard mode, maybe? <laughs> no, no, I think that's just, uh, that's just a little silly thing you can do. Scratch Dragon finding black armor and a poison claw. The black armor is probably going to sell for good money. And if you're truly desperate, you can put it on Dark Knight Cecil because uh, this is not a high HP party and maybe you need every ounce of defense you can get. But we'll see who the character is here in another Rosa here in, Can in Dancing Castle. That is something to not be as excited about because while I do enjoy Rosa, I do enjoy having other characters who are not Rosa and a second one doesn't necessarily help the team that much. Yeah, the one, one maybe benefit here if we end up having to take a second rosa is that uh, the heroine ro robe has been uh lowered in rarity on in the 4.1 release so we have a more more of an opportunity to pull out a powerful uh, archer rosa here that is very true and if you have a heroine rope rosa with some good weapons and just have two of them yeah that's definitely a good just end game berserker to be entirely honest it's not as good as some of the mainline berserkers but oh boy there's artella i wonder if scratch dragon is going to say no to him or if both of our owners are going to be saying yes old man join the team and the old man joins the team immediately yeah, I mean, I guess one of the, I guess the only reason you wouldn't take Tell immediately is because we don't have any objectives that do require going to the moon, right? So maybe, maybe you could finish the scene without a darkness crystal. That is entirely plausible. Though, Tell does do a lot in general, to be entirely honest, with uh, just after you complete ordeals, you'll have that full complement of spells. He's going to be helped out in a lot of situations. He's probably going to have Berserk before Rosa because Rosa needs to be level 20 for that spell. And hey, exit mage definitely helpful early on. Yeah, we, we've we've been seeing the uh, the new Baron D machine manipulation throughout this tournament. Tell is going to help us there, but the original the original intention was to have either never see D machines or only rarely see D machines. But I don't. I, I, every time I'm in that position where I don't have my D machine available on a table flag, it's uh, I just kind of get panicked, and I always spend way too long grinding because of it. There is a serious issue with that, just because, you agreed, it is very hard to go and grind on these flags, because a lot of the reliable grinds are, well, sirens are out, and D-Machines with requires Tella. You can go and do Mac Giant grinds, which a character with an Ogre Axe, or a Thunderclaw, who can do good damage, or sit with hammers, or even a good bow-wielding character with Charm Arrows, will be able to do a lot. But that is a slower grind. For anyone who didn't watch the opening, uh, the opening race, or oh, was it the opening race? No, uh, at the uh, race Monday, Dia's race, she showed uh, a Mac Giant strategy with a full mage party that was very impressive. So there are ways to do all those Mac, Mac Giant grind, no matter what your party comp is. Our team's going, our runners definitely in a prime position to show off all the different ways they know the game, all the ways they can go and leverage just the maximum they can. And speaking of leveraging things, Scratch Dragon is going to have to go and leverage something because Blake here is going to be a little bit of an issue. This is not a high damage. Okay, Big Bomb is going to go and do a lot of damage. It's not going to go in full kill, but it is going to go and bring the team most of the way there. And I think we'll be able to get through there. This without too much issue on X Pancras or on uh, Scratch Dragon's side. Well, X Pancras is swapping back to the short bow and charm arrows, I believe, to go and hit Plague and do some extra damage. Yeah, but even even if we're doing a low damage here, uh, Plague isn't going to be a threatening boss, it's just going to be a time-consuming boss. We start with 15 life potions, and uh, we just uh, we just have to wait, wait, wait out those uh, Doom counters and reset them when we can. 
or do what Scratch Dragon does and just uh, send your Dark Knight into it. And hey, here's an atom, and that is one half of objective number one. Well, yeah, it would be it would be crazy to find both pieces of the Excalibur on the overworld. And, uh, you know, one of our other objectives is an open overworld objective. And then so as soon as they get that under underground access, the seed could be in go mode. Of course, the underground access doesn't have to be that magma key guaranteed. So it could still be spicy. Indeed, with the objectives, drop the magma key into the aggregate well. That is one of the two ways underground we are not unlikely to go and see this in the overworld and to defeat the boss in the mist cave that doesn't require any key items the runners can go and do that now they're probably not doing so just because it's going to take time and you know why wait why waste time when you can go and wait until you have a much higher damage party and scratch dragon pulling a dancing dagger from the open toria treasury that is not the worst item to find though no one in this party can currently use it yeah, Pankraz went up to the top of Hobbs, saw a Porum and a flavor of Milan, and then immediately reset out since we already have a White Mage. And we have a better, two better White Mages already sitting at, uh, at Mysidia if he so chooses to take one of them. So now we're going into Fabul to do this check. Yep, and we already have exit, so Porum's biggest advantage is uh, seriously diminished. And Ashura at Fabul. Pancras resetting out of that. I don't blame him. Uh, Pancras might want to go and do some shopping first to see if he can find mute arrows. Yeah, mute arrows, or even just doing ordeals first to get the uh, to get the wall spell on Tella to make to make the Ashura a little bit less uh, less of a of a slog through. Agreed. Just anything to go and help out this fight. And Scratch Dragon is going around doing some extra shopping. Both of our runners going from different ways, ending up in Silvera, and checking the shops and finding some things. Scratch Dragon buying a poison claw for Young. We mentioned that uh, that all of the chests are, are less valuable here on these table flags. Well, all of the shops are less valuable too. So, not going to be finding anything to do exceptional power, but those poison claws will give, uh, give Yang a small strength bonus. Yep, and Scratch Dragon is. Heading to Fabul now, we'll discover the uh, Shura waiting for him there. And X Pancras is going to be doing a bit of shop, a bit more shopping. Probably looking for finding charm arrows. Not going to do quadruple damage to mages, but those are probably the most powerful arrows you're going to find on the overworld. Very helpful. And we do find exits in the Toria pub. That is a fine item to, f to find because uh, Rosa doesn't have exit, but we have Tella, so not really necessary to go in too much with. Yeah, they, I mean, a lot of time spent shopping here, um, where I haven't we haven't really seen players spend uh, spend a huge amount of time shopping or opening chests on these flags so far. So. Uh, I think probably because the party comp is so weak that they're they're looking for some equipment to, to boost that power. Yep, this party comp, we don't really have a great source of damage. We have no SIDs, we have no canes with good weapons, we have no edge because we also don't have the C-Relax flag on, we have the C-Standard flag on, so edge is only going to show up behind gated checks. And... Scratch Dragon is going and burning double Star Veil to go and get a wall on Ashura. That is going to go and make it easier for Scratch Dragon to get through this fight, though it is still probably going to be a bit of a problem just because you're not doing a lot of damage. No, but interesting he's deciding to take the fight here and uh, just seeing if he's no he's he's not gonna take the fight here hey there's mute arrows in agart which is not a place you want to go to if you don't have a magma key but if you need them you need them so that those arrows will do quadruple damage against mages meanwhile scratch dragon is saying i'm out let's go to ordeals 
yeah, would have probably been my my first choice just to get that wall up, kind of inert uh, Asura. It'll still be a long fight, but um, it'll be a doable fight. Yep. Ooh, we find Palom on our deals. That is a pickup. Uh, yes. Scratch Dragon will no longer be able to pick up any more characters, but Scratch Dragon has a team of Cecil, Yang, Rosa, Tella, Hallam. That is a very nice, well-rounded team. The biggest downside, it's shackled to vanilla agility, and I believe Cecil is going to be the fastest character in that party. Yeah, thankfully, thankfully, I mean, we do have some choices to manipulate the agility going forward. The, the chief one just limiting uh, limiting Cecil to only level 44, 45, which locks that 28 agility and locks her almost at uh, that relative agility too. You do have the option of leaving Cecil at level 1 and finding a Drain Sword or a Dwarf Axe to give him a minus 5 agility and keeping him at 8 agility, though. That might be less than an attractive option. Yeah, we have we have a different definition of option. <laughs> That's... Uh, that, that would be the bold play, I think. Depends on how much you value that uh, unfair agility setup for you, or just because... Let's be honest, fair agility can be very scary. There are some bosses who will just absolutely destroy you. Wyvern is a very big and real concern for our players, because if Wyvern's in a fast spot like Ashura or the Sealed Cave, and you have to get through it, you have to do either some extreme shenanigans to mess with the agility enough to let yourself be able to win that fairly or grind to obscenely high levels. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a bad option if um, if we're going to keep the Cecil to maybe keep him, keep him down for most of the seed until we get those rude bosses out of the way. Maybe give him a slingshot with the, with the grind, but of course... Uh, a D machine grind is gonna it's gonna be a little scary because then we have to make sure we're slingshotting him to that 44 45 for bringing him into Zeromas. Well, if you go and have something like a crystal sword, why well, care about Cecil's agility? The only thing that's gonna matter in that fight is Cecil and Rosa, and Rosa just needs to get enough turns to cast your or Cecil's gonna be the one doing all the work. It, it's it's funny because I think going into this, like we we in the in the free enterprise community, we were joking. Okay, table flag time. No more crystal sword every seed. And uh, in one of my one of my first table seeds, I pulled a crystal sword. And a couple of these early races, we've seen crystal swords. So it's not out of the pool. It is rare, but it's still out there. It's still up there. It's still waiting to say hello. Would you like to play with vanilla agility? But scratch and getting through the evil wall at the first spot of ordeals going in, into that fight. Meanwhile, Pancras finds the magma key behind the Ashura at Fabul. Those mute arrows doing so much. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think this is going to be a, a huge amount of loss for Scratch Dragon because Pancras is going to he's going to be doing ordeals eventually. That's not a check that, that Pancras is going to fade. So probably will still come out to about uh, to about the same time. And Scratch Dragon finding another mage boss in the back deck spot. The Maga Sisters are around, so those Mew Arrows are getting into being really prime position. They are going to do so much work for this team, to be entirely honest. And speaking of doing work, the Maga Sisters are doing work against Scratch Dragon's team, just one-shotting character after character. 520 damage with those level 2 spells is a lot for this point in time. And yeah, there's no just just going to be another boss. The Pancras is going to get through faster with those those mute arrows, and so Scratch Dragon gaining on that disadvantage here. Yep, and it looks like Scratch Dragon is going to turn on encounters and take some place to get some experience. Not the worst play I feel here, just because, or maybe not. Maybe I uh, misread what they were doing. They're just coming back here, reviving Cecil to go and be another warm body to take hits. And going back into the fight. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely, it's not an undoable fight. It's just going to be, it's going to be a rude one. Yes. And meanwhile, Pancras is underground and is going and hitting those chests. They have higher tier loot because they are gated behind the Magna Key. And finding some interesting things, specifically an Elven Bow. That is going to be one of those things you want your Rosa using. That's, uh, that's some good, that's a good piece of equipment. 
Pancras also also checking our job dwarf. Our job dwarf this seed is an educational psychiatrist or psychologist. I'm sorry, and uh, the seed is officially validated. <laughs> yes, job dwarf is uh, in the middle of the game. They are a farmer in the randomizer. Well, if we can randomize the boss locations, the character locations, the treasures, we can randomize the, jo- the uh, dwarf's job, right? Why not randomize all the things? I agree. And Scratch is going into Palom is staying alive. That is going to go and help out considerably as Palom does have a dancing dagger, which is doing 272 points of damage, which is more than the frontline fighters are going to be able to do, I believe. Yeah, don't. I mean, I don't hate Pancras here checking his his free items. You know, really, he's two items away from go mode. Um, if he can pull them out of the free, you know, the, the free chest here, and then Sheila one, uh, he's he's gonna be he's gonna be in a great position. Yeah, either finding the Legend Sword or the Eight Earth Crystal will put Pancras in. Well, we'll get uh, Pancras access to the crystal, and then Pancras will need either the Pass or the Darkness Crystal to go and get into true go mode. Though, I expect the Darkness Crystal is going to be the real form of go mode for Pancras and their team. It has that feeling to it, but, uh, but once again, that if uh, Earth Crystal and Legend Sword could be hiding up on that moon. Oh yeah, this is uh, no matter what seed is far from over. We have just begun this uh, lovely, <laughs> lovely seed. It is one of the one of the exciting things about these flags is that even here at the twenty minute mark, we we could not tell you whether this is going to be you know a, a 45, 50 minute seed or a two and a half hour seed. Yeah, if we've got some rude bosses, we can go and be stuck here for a bit. Getting the Luka key from the free chest, that uh, is relevant, because unlike on the group stage, where we have the warp glitch on, that is turned off on table flags. If you want that item in Sealed Cave, you're going to have to get it yourself. Yeah, Bach, I think the energy that I want to put into this this seed is uh, demist at uh, at the uh, the Major Sister spot, uh, gating our... Uh, gating our um darkness crystal and then the dark earth crystal up on the oh well, no that would be out of logic wouldn't it uh that's too bad i don't know you can do that because yeah oh yeah you're yeah. right yeah yeah because if that's tech that boss is technically available without the earth crystal yes though i was gonna say demist at magasis is holding the earth crystal earth crystal holding the legend sword and then uh treasury holding a crystal sword right Ah, well, Trojan holding anything at that point. You've got at that point you are probably going to have found the darkness crystal and full clear the moon before you check the Maga Sister spot with no earth crystal. It's such a miserable check. I mean it's it's almost like a bug. That's how miserable that is. It is a very, very niche thing, I will admit. But I am nothing if not a lover of niche things. But uh Scratch Dragon, meanwhile, making progress on this fight has gotten the middle sister Cindy down, down to Sandy and Mindy. Going to be able to go and just lean on that dancing dagger damage from Palom and probably get through this. The charm is getting a little scary. Yeah, is is taking a huge amount of time here to get through this one boss, and 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 when uh, when he sees what is at uh, Fabul, I think he's gonna he's gonna feel very behind. Yes, that is going to go and be very unpleasant for Scratch Dragon, just because... Yeah, this is a lot of time, and the time that Scratch Dragon has been working on this on this ordeal, as Pancras has completed Fabul, dropped the Magma Key down the wheel while completing Objective Number 2, and has pretty much full looted the Underground, is going and checking the last shop of Dwarf Castle. It uh, doesn't seem like they're saving, so I doubt they're going to be checking the fight to see what's there, but... Pancras has definitely gone and picked up a lot of time while Scratch Dragon is going and clawing his way through this fight. One interesting thing I saw Pancras doing was checking checking some of those chests in the Sylph Cave. That is not something that I, I ever think to do because there's there's seven trap chests there and they're, they're fairly scary bosses for these levels. I mean, is that is that something that you would think to do just to pull some decent loot out? Absolutely. The places that have trap chests do have even better loot and yeah, I kind of want loot on these flags. There's a lot of stuff I would really prefer to have 
and pulling something like a lightsaber, an ogre axe, a black belt, just something to go and help the team would be a huge help. All right, so, oh, Pankra's not running all the way for Bull to, to do the Sheila one and two checks, but uh, going to get his, his Cecil online. Is going to be in good position for it with that Elven Bow and this other form. Like, Rose is going to go and have enough DPS to carry, and Pancras is probably going to be picking up uh, Pelham here, so going to be in decent position. But Scratch Dragon is through the Maga Sisters and is heading straight into the chamber, gambling that there is nothing that's going to kill him right here, and I hope he is not punished for that thought. Yeah, so Pankras, different strategies here, which is really interesting, but Scratch Dragon has his full party already set up. Pankras is still, let's see if he takes the, is taking the Palom, so only in one slot left on Pankras' side. Um, but I wonder if he'll, he'll wait until, because Earth Crystal is uh, required. Um, I don't I wonder if he'll check those characters, but that's a long oh. check. Speaking of a long check, this ordeal just got even longer. Alt Gauntlet is in the Crystal Chamber. You hate to see it, but uh, not from up here. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm playing this, I'm just disgusted. I'm what? I'm coming to this. I'm excited. This is a series of five random encounters. Well, not so random encounters because they are pulled from the random counter pool, but they still are fixed fights. So both of them are beginning the same five fights here, but it's going to go and be a little bit of a slog for them to get through. Yeah, and while while this is uh, this is going to take a, a lot longer, we you know we have upgraded our Cecil, and so our Paladin Cecil is going to get experience from these fights, and we'll and the rest of our characters too. So that uh, that has a little bit of benefit as uh, as we wait to get our underground access. Yeah, that's going to have some benefit, but that does go and put in the scary situation of. You're losing the ability to go and anchor as strongly as you could before, so definitely makes sense here. You you just need, you need Cecil to go and be killing these things. You can't go and not have Cecil help out killing this stuff. It looks like Scratch Dragon did pick up that uh, Ice Brand. I believe that was from one of the shops that they were checking. Uh, ice Brands would not be in any shop that Scratch Dragon had oh. access to, so he must have found it. Scratch Ice Brand is a uh, tier is above tier four or five i believe it's tier four but uh overworld shots only go up to tier three yeah so he must have pulled that from a chest uh some in one of the dungeons he's already checked so that's that's gonna help it's a very solid weapon for cecil uh, uh chat pointing out that the the ice brand was available for sale in dwarf castle so i wasn't just seeing you're but, correct. Yeah, but Scratch Dragon would not have had access to that yet, so he must have pulled it from the chest. Yep. The underground shops can go and sell them, it's just overworld shops can't. Well, ungated shops is the more correct term. But we did go and see that the pass was the key item of ordeal, so Pancras is going to go and have a pretty nice toy after he goes and gets out of here. He's going to be really one item, theoretically one item from Go Mode. Practically... Darkness Crystal and an item away from Go Mode. Unless uh, Pancras is able to go and do non uh, grind strats, such as the 1200 HP strats that have been pioneered by Zilch, or if there's an Eddie in the seed, do Eddie strats. Yeah, those those Eddie strats have now been, uh, you know, Scratch Dragon is they are not available to him because he's he has his five characters, but. I think guys could grab an Edward and, and just run with that. Yes, that is uh, having only four characters not committing to the young early is leaving Pancras with more options, which is going to be very beneficial to Pancras. Yeah, it's 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 a wonderful balance that these flags uh, these flags give us. It's. It's very different than the, uh, than the say the football gauntlet flags, which typically you were taking these fights with only uh, only three characters there as well. But uh, but you ha you never had the option to take it with more than three characters. 
Yes, this is having the three characters on is something that is well, at least Table Flags really wanted to go and make sure you had options because he didn't want to go and get stuck with Double Tele Dark Knight Cecil for the overworld. That's just painful and slow. That's not exactly terribly exciting because there's not many options, but hey, you're going in having a whole bunch of characters open, but you really have to be selective. It really helps make these flags very interesting. Uh, I tell you what, if I was stuck with a double Tele Dark Knight Cecil, that probably would be a nine hour seed for me. Uh, it would definitely be a try and find a dark a black sword for the beginning of the seed type of seed. Or hope that uh, recall serves you well. Because recall can hit yeah. virus. Recall can hit virus, recall can hit weak too, on uh, if it's uh, if you're just trying to grind. There's some interesting and, stuff hidden in there. And it can hit AoE fatal. I actually managed to pull that once on a Dark Imps at the Mylon and Friends spot. What is that, like 5% on that? Uh, it's pretty It's pretty darn low, but because the recall is automatically all target, fatal, which you can't go in multi-target, still gets multi-targeted anyways. And Stella doesn't even learn that spell, which makes me wonder where he's recalling that from. <laughs> somewhere. Some, somewhere deep inside. Maybe Tella isn't remembering spells. Maybe Tella has formed a uh, pact with some form of Elder God that may or may not be terribly kind. Or maybe he was just sick once. You know, we don't know. It's, <laughs> it's not in the lore. <laughs> Very true. But we do see a Palum here in the spot that is normally young. So second Palum isn't the worst thing for Pancras, but not going to be an Eddie to go and do Eddie strats if we get into a very fast go mode. And Scratch Dragon is going and pushing through this Paladin, who punches pretty hard, but is not going to be able to do too much. Young going and getting through this, so one fight down. The less than pleasant fight coming up next. Ooh, that's a nice spot to find D-Mist. It's, it's going to be a little long, but it's it's not going to be as rude as, say, the moon. <laughs> it is definitely much prefer preferable than to, say, the Magus spot, holding the Earth Crystal, <laughs> so... Yes, I believe our runners will be more than pleased to see this uh, Demist. And Virus on two Spellcasters, this Demist isn't going to be able to go and get two on this phase, I think. And this, uh, the Baron Inn check is something that uh, the Pancras might decide to fade a little while if he decides to, to head back underground. So depending on what we pull here, it could give Scratch Dragon a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, and Scratch Dragon really needs something to go and help put him back into this. But the worst thing that could happen for Scratch Dragon is to get a hook from here that is entirely unnecessary to go through. Well, that is definitely not going to go and send Scratch in the wrong way. It's a Ninja Star. It's, it's really good selling. It sells for a lot of money. Yeah, I'd say they just, essentially they just handed him a big stack of cash. And full healed up from this fight, and is now probably going to be going and checking that Demist because you really want to see the other key item. Ooh, finding silk webs and life potions in the Baron shop. Very nice find. I think the the best thing for Scratch Dragon here is to, is to pull that Darkness Crystal. The worst thing is to pull something that uh, maybe gets him into a bit of a rat hole, like a, like a Baron key or a Twin Harp. If the Baron Key eventually leads to uh, one of the objectives or the Darkness Crystal, that could still work out well for a Scratch Dragon, just because the earlier you can get a D-Machine grind done, the more capable you are to just roll over a Siege. And in the meantime, X Pancras is going and getting through the uh, Alt Gauntlet fight here. Is Well, it's the Alt Gauntlet. It's not really going fast, but that's kind of its thing. Oh, oh goodness, no. no. Scratch Commentator's Dragon. cursed. Please oh, no. do not skip Fabul. Uh so I've actually I I commentated a, a race that was almost exactly the same scenario where 
Magma Mimeki was at for Bool, and then the other player pulled the hook, and they went different routes into the underground. So, yep. I've seen it happen before. I think I was there with you when it happened, because I remember commentating one of those as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. But Scratch Dragon is going and checking the uh, Mr. Dragon Cave. Is going to go and get that objective out of the way. So, hey, it's Rubikent. Uh, guess who's weak to ice? And guess who has an ice weapon? Should take one swing here. Uh, one Berserk swing with his cloak open. Nine, well, almost 2,000 points of damage. Yeah, Rubikent is just... Rubikent is getting left out in the cold today. Uh, 2,000 points damage at, what is this, like a 200 hit point spot? 600, I think. Yeah, same difference. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm well, not that up on a, that spot. Okay. Yeah, it's not exactly the one that you uh, you want to memorize for any, any strategies. But Rubicon out of the way is definitely uh, definitely a good thing. We don't want Scratch, to you're, you're just catching the character spot. here, right? You're just checking the character. You're not. You're just gonna loot and check the character. You're not gonna dive this hook. Please tell me you're not gonna dive this hook. He uh, he does not have a character slot open, <laughs> so I think he's he might be checking. Hopefully, just the item shop or the weapon shop, and then going back. But let's let's hope that's the case. Finds vampires there. Those are some very helpful items. That is gonna go and it's a J item they can buy that will go and do. Four to six hundred damage to some stuff, which is pretty handy. And finding ogre axes, blizzard spears, long swords, black swords. Nice shop. Very Not nice shop. shop. Not checking the the armor shop, which could sell curse rings, which is something. And Scratch Dragon is choosing to go further in and is opening chest. Maybe Scratch Dragon is just trying to go and get some extra loot, or Scratch Dragon is looking to be heading to the under maybe we'll see a boss that will tell scratch dragon no this is not the logical path underground this is out that is elsewhere that is behind ashura baka they're never gonna let us commentate together again if this happens <laughs> you know oh oh that is the worst boss you can find that is not a your your underground access is elsewhere that is kanizo that's a uh, Kanazo is at a twenty four thousand HP spot. That wave is going to absolutely kill any character that goes off on hand. <laughs> we have vanilla agility on with the starting Cecil, so you had no option to not go and have vanilla agility. And yeah, if, my, so for, uh, if my math is right, it's the six percent, right? So, so those waves are going to be doing thirteen hundred damage right at the start. Four percent. So, uh, without any damage done, they're going to do eleven hundred. 100, 2400, you said, right? You're going to do 24,000 HP. Yeah, 24,000 times four. That's just below 1,000 damage. Yeah, still still enough to kill our parties in uh, in a single hit, though. Yep, this uh, this would go extremely badly for Scratch Dragon, as, yeah, Scratch Dragon is, Scratch Dragon is committing. And Pancraz is not going to go and be deceived. Pancraz is going and clearing the uh, Baronin and got a rat tail from Sheila too. So Pancraz is going to be able to go and potentially find other progress for this uh, from this Mist Dragon. This is this is unfortunately looking rather dire for Pan for uh, Scratch Dragon just because we know that the Magma Key is in play at Fabul. And there's nothing, there is nothing in the hook route that can give him any additional uh, utility in the scene. Yep. Because we have already found D-Mist. The best thing for Scratch Dragon is a Valvalis, a Wyvern, or a Golbez at the King Queen Evelyn spot to go and tell him, this is not the way. But Scratch Dragon doing some uh, doing some good strats on these uh, these mad ogres, making them into uh, into very small versions of themselves, and then they're going to be a lot more susceptible to those to those uh, physical attacks. Yes, when they target is mini, they will go and take double damage from physical attacks and do one damage. And because the ogres, well, this is one of the ways to tell it is great. You don't have hourglasses available in many of these seeds, so 
can't go and just stop them. But you can go and make them small and rather weak and feeble thanks to Tella. Another reason why Tella is a very helpful character on these flags. Pancras is about to get his own hook, and uh, he's able to turn into Rat Tail with it, though. Yeah, this is going to be I mean, Pancras is just climbing up there in key items. Pancras is at six. The Scratch Dragon's three. The pass is not considered a key item in these flags, but we do keep it on our tracker because it is a very, very helpful item. It, if you don't have the Darkness Crystal, it's your way to Zeromus, so that is one important thing. And if you do have a Darkness Crystal and need to go and get to Zeromus, it saves you a three-minute walk. So Scratch Dragon pulling a uh, Black Belt from the Mad Ogre chest, which is going to gonna be a really useful item for that Yang, but it is not a Crystal Sword. No, that is... Um, Scratch Dragon really didn't need to go and pull a strong weapon from there to go and help him out, because... Yeah, that's something. But Pancras has completed objective number three, same one as a Scratch Dragon, but has also completed objective number two thanks to having completed the bull, which Scratch Dragon is currently fading because it is Ashura and has not found anti-mage weaponry. So assuming assuming that Scratch Dragon does find a uh, an out-of-logic boss here, he still has to walk out of, of here, and the... At that point, he's probably lost seven, seven and a half minutes or so. It's it's even if he turns around now, it might be pretty dire. There is a shot. There's a small same grace to this. You can warp out of here before, before you get to the last floor. You can warp out of Upper Babel. It's faster than walking. Tella has warp, and then Tella can just go straight into exit. But it is definitely a sizable loss to Scratch Dragon. And it is Bahamut who is not going to say go somewhere else. It's going to be Bahamut. It's like, all right, great. Three boss on a hook route. This is going to be fine. And Pancras is coming to the hook route. Might be going and checking the character. Looks to be going and just skipping all the treasures. So might also just be checking the shops as well. But Scratch Dragon is uh, Scratch Dragon's getting prepared for a fight. In which uh, he might not need to go and be, he might not need to be doing. And it's going to be a very, very hard fight because Kanazo at hook is uh, is one of the most brutal and tactical fights in the game, in my opinion. It, it's a, it's an almost guarantee that uh, Scratch Dragon is going to wipe a few times before he manages to make through it, make his way through it. And even the best runners would wipe here, I think. It's uh. Not wiping here is going to be very difficult, I think. And just getting through this fight at all is going to be very, very tricky. I mean, a couple a couple things, a couple items would have helped if you picked them up. You know, if we picked up a Thunderclaw, put it on Yang, that would have helped. Some light arrows, maybe on the Rosa. I don't think we have any of that. And uh, we do have some lightning magic on with Palom, but uh, is Palom, does Palom even have Lit 2 at this point? Yes, Palom learns Lit 2 in... The Super first, early. Yeah, the first three levels. Pancras seeing yet another Rosa and a Kanazo that I'm sure Pancras is thinking, wow, why did I have to fight this guy? Yeah, Pancras, Pancras of course, it makes sense for him to check the character there because he has that open slot, but he, seeing Kanazo, is not going to not gonna run after those bosses just for the fun of it. Nope, and Pancras is going underground. Scratch Dragon, Cecil's first turn is being devoted to throwing a Thorough Wage. You're going to keep the team alive, necessary, and is going to be important. Does have Quake on the kid, is going to be going and throwing Ice 2 with Palom. Cecil takes a 350 point damage punch from the front and queues up a Thorough Rage on Rosa as Kanazo is going straight into gathering the water. Not even through the whole team and has two having to go and dispel two different waves. This is. Scratch Dragon is going and making progress, but this is going to be a very slow fight with how this is going. Meanwhile, Pancras is uh, doing a little bit of a little bit of a mini grind here against the doors. Uh, the door grind being kind of kind of one of those technical grinds that you can do uh, without uh, without any items or uh, or you know or other special key items. You just need access to the sealed cave. 
Yep, and that disrupt is reflectable, so if it hits a wall, it's going to go straight back to the door. Yeah, I recently recently learned the wall strats, and they, they can be tricky, but they, uh, they do work. Yep. Certainly, certainly not as reliable a strategy to say the D machine. If you if you can avoid it doing doing the doors, it's definitely preferable. Yep, and Scratch Dragon takes it wave, and that's a reset. This is going to be a very brutal fight for Scratch Dragon that he is going to eventually discover was not necessary, and that is going to really hurt. And Panicar is just doing one door. I believe they just wanted to get quick on Palum and just be ready to roll over that dwarf castle. Yeah, the, the, and you know, at this stage in the tournament, all of our all of our runners have have kind of gotten through gotten through one or, or two rounds. They are all seasoned, very skilled runners. It, it's it is a boon that Pancras, you know, got the hook, knew he needed to get underground, dove it right away. It's it was it was impressive that he saw the Kinazzo and just pushed on through like he knows he knows his limitations and his ability and he's taken taking it like a champ here but no one no one is happy to see this fight no this is this is one of those fights where you get through and all right i got through this fight we're gonna go make the best of the seed and when you see that magma key is just gonna absolutely be crushing it's uh it is not an unreasonable play to go and skip Fabul because you have a pan, you know you're going to have to... You can go and do a one... Save a trip to Fabul, and it's not guaranteed that there's a second way underground. Heck, it's not guaranteed that you're going to go and see both ways underground. You can go and be very easily just see... All right, great, here's a Gungnir Spear for going and doing Fabul. That's not the case today, unfortunately, and Scratch Dragon taking another wipe. Try... Scratch Dragon is going to be in a very, very unpleasant situation of just needing to get through the first few turns in a very specific manner and then try and go from there. This is... I, I don't want to sound pessimistic, but I think the first 15 to 20 turns for Scratch Dragon are pretty much guaranteed to be spoken for just for getting through waves and trying to grind out a little bit of damage. The... The other thing, of course, here is that, you know, maybe with a better anchor, we get through it a little easier. I mean, Cecil's still low level, but he's still not as optimal as, say, Tella anchoring right now. Yeah, this is uh, this situation is just... Really, what you need is a curse drink. That's something that could really save this, because, yes, Cecil goes down to just absolute dumpster values, but you can bring the rest of your team up to be as fast as the rest of this as Kanaizo, and that can... Kanaizo is a very technical fight. You have to dispel all the waves. You need to keep your character levels alive. In order to go and get reduce those waves, you need to be doing damage, and you're not getting that out right now, so you have to go and just be, keep dispelling the waves. Once you've got eight to 10,000 damage into this fight, you can relax on that front a bit, but for now... You really can't afford to go and lose turns to anything. You need to go and have a turn after Kanazu goes. Yeah, I think the the best thing Scratch Dragon can do is feel like that he he can't push past this. Leave Cave Eblin with the goal of maybe clearing uh, Castle Eblin because there's three trap trap chests there where he can pull some good loot. A lot of other, a lot of uh, secondary chests, which could have some good stuff for him, and those trap chests could also get him a couple levels. If he does that, maybe he'll decide to to do Fabul while he's out of the cave before going back in. So that's definitely something that I would be thinking after the, the third wipe, you know? Yeah, no, that's uh, that is a very reasonable thing to go and do. Just look, this isn't working. Let's change strategies. Let's get something else going. But speaking of getting something going, Pancras has gotten through Dwarf Castle so quickly, I didn't even see the first boss. I did not see the first boss. Second boss was that uh, the Dark Elf. But uh, right. what was the first boss there? And, the and I missed the character check as well. First boss was Dark Elf, right? We saw the spray. The second boss was the Lunars. The character was Yon. Okay, there we go. Not really seeing a large variety of characters. We have only seen six different characters so far. A Forum on Hobbs. 
four Rosas, one Tella, the Cecil we started with, and two Youngs. That sounds about right. Hey, would you like another ninja sword? No? Here you are. Have another ninja sword anyways. Dwarf Castle giving a Murasame just like the Rat Tail. Hank Krabs, uh might be holding out for uh, that Darkness Crystal character. I mean, to be entirely honest, you've got a decent enough team. You can go and keep holding out for a bit longer. Whoever you want to add to your last try, you want to make sure you're going and getting a lot of value out of them. And if you wait until the end, a second pound that you can slingshot easily to nuke to carry you through the moon, or just a second palum to go and slingshot to stupidly high levels while you get your first level first palum up to nuke is also acceptable. Yeah, or are you uh, a second Cecil who can take a dirt nap and uh, then you don't have to worry about limiting limiting the levels that you're you're getting your initial Cecil. I agree, a second Cecil would be a huge boon for Pancras. Pancras has a lot of options and it's in the driver's seat whether they know it or not, because Scratch Dragon is clawing his way through Kanazo at Rubikant. And it is going to be a very, very painful fight for uh, Scratch Dragon, unfortunately. The wave is. The water is dispelled, but did Kanazo get a wave queued up? Yes, he did. Is this going to kill the team? Yes, it is. I. I... Getting a nasty hooker out while being restreamed is like my biggest fear. So like whenever I see it, it just I feel like this my my whole stomach just drop. It's it's so miserable to watch. It is all it this is so awful for Scratch Dragon. I I really feel for him. This is just uh, Pancras is just going and taking more and more of a lead here. Scratch Dragon, once he gets through, is going to be able to go and start trying to claw his way back. He'll have some more levels than uh, Pancras had when Pancras got underground, but Pancras has more levels than Scratch Dragon now, just by virtue of, hey, there's a door grind, hey, I've got high-level characters, I've got characters who've just been able to get through more fights. Pancras is taking this uh, Elements fight at the top of the, uh, the Tower of the Bell here. Um, not the not the easiest fight, but also won't won't probably be a, be too bad. Oh well, okay. With fire magic, it probably will be very easy. Yep, elements is uh what we see reflect strats come out a lot for Zeromus. Elements is my next favorite place to go and do reflect strats because elements is two different fights, well two different bosses that they go and switch halfway through. But if you do all the reflected damage, well you're not actually going to go and get that second boss. You're going to go if you stay on my land phase and do all the damage needed to kill the first phase, you can get through this fight in half the amount of HP as we see Pancras getting through, not even going and taking full damage, and gets the Darkness Crystal. With the only thing left on Earth being the Luka Key and the Fate March bosses, how do you feel about going and diving to the moon? Uh, it's something I'm always nervous about, of course, um, but... I think Pancras, but I think in these in this situation, go up, you know, have the open character slot. We're going to go up, we're going to check the character, we're going to make a decision at that point what our final party is going to be, and then we're going to do machine. And then at that point, the moon is pretty much going to be free. I don't just, I just, well, it won't be free. It won't be free, but it'll be it'll be doable. Free was the wrong word. I mean, going and having a very high level party can definitely go and make a lot of the moon much more doable and much more free. The thing I disagree on is I think you go and check a Luka Cave first for mm -hmm. two reasons. One, is it necessary and can I get it before I do a grind? Like, is it my Earth Crystal or is it my Legend Sword? Two, if it is necessary, can I get through the boss there? Is that boss Wyvern and am I going to need to do something different? Is say, I know it's Wyvern there. I know I need to get through it. I need to level up a character to go and get faster than Cecil to be RA1 and another character to be at least RA2 in order to get through that fight. That could those are 
that is one big piece of information that would really go and define how I want to approach my grind. Yeah, and you know that that the field cave is a long walk, but if, if there's no value there, you just reset out, pick up your save from outside, and then you can you can go on to your next route. Yep, and if there is value there, you know you do not have to go and be wandering around on the moon. You can go and either take the fight now or reset out. Yeah, you have to rewalk the sealed cave, but you're going in with the information of what you need and you know exactly what checks you have left and you have a pass. You can go and just go straight at it after you beat that, uh, finish that grind and beat that sealed cave. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely a good point. Th thinking it through though, I wonder, I wonder if the the players who direct advanced from group versus the players who had to go through the hooker magma routes. I wonder if those direct advanced players will have a bit more of an advantage. Like, I mean, they have, they've, they've had more time to practice the table seeds, but the, the people who went through hook and magma also played a lot more group seeds and faded that sealed cave check a lot more. So I wonder if that's, that might affect people's routings going into this table stage. It's also the flip side of the people who direct advance and had a large, a large amount of time off from racing. So that racing mentality might have slipped a little bit compared to them, and they might need a bit of time to react. Wait, <laughs> hey, look, it's Rosa. Do you want another Rosa? No, thank you. And Pancras is choosing their final character. I'm going to guess it's going to be Palom. No, it's Yang. Adding Yang to the team. No, nope, not Yang. Oh, different Yang. The better colored Yang. I like that palette better. I like it. You know, I'm not going to disagree with Pancras. I would go and say no. I, I, I want that Yang. I want the good looking Yang. I mean, granted, they're all good looking, but some are better looking to me than others. Yeah, but then my, my racing um, mind is pretty much just a constant prolonged scream. So I don't <laughs> know if I would actually be able to differentiate colors at that point. <laughs> I, I understand that because of the number of times I've been going and uh, racing and I couldn't even remember what my Z sprite was. Like just doing the Zeromas fight, Z sprite not even registering in my brain. Scratch ring and continuing with that... Uh, Kanazo fight and is progress is being made, keeping Palo Matella at low health, but I do believe Scratch Dragon's out of Thor Rages. Could get put could put him in an ugly, ugly situation. Does still have the Palom to throw the lit ones if needed, but would prefer that he do some more damage than that. Yeah. Maybe he can get to Tella's turn fast enough to go and have Tella throw lit ones, but Time to go and have the black mages start doing the work. Pancras threw the bearing manipulation very fast. I think I think it was either three or four steps before he got his first encounter. Uh, took took one more fight. Was happy with that. And uh, right now we should be on the correct encounter seed to pull a a, a searcher and a demon machine. Yep. And Kanazo did get a wave off, but has done enough damage that hey. We can go and just tank this now. So if Rosen can go and keep the characters up, we have gotten to shell phase. Now this is we're good. At... This is good. This is unfortunately going to be slow because every time you punch Kinazu, we're going to get hiding in the shell. But if you can go and just keep the damage up, you can keep. You can just burn down Kinazu there. We have an ice claw on Yang, so he's doing extra damage. The remedy will go and heal for twenty four hundred because it's ten percent of the. Spot C3, okay, 2520, so a little bit more, but as long as we can keep up that amount of damage, over that amount of damage while we're going and doing this fight, we're going to be able to get through this. Scratch is going to get through that Kainazo. It's a bit precarious here because I think when he enters the shell, he has 10% of his health left, right? 25. 20, yeah, 2500, and then he's healing himself 2500, and he's, oh, Scratch Dragon doing probably 2000 a turn at best. It's really like he just came out of the shell there, so this is still not over. It's still it's still going to be a slog. Yeah, Kanazu goes in the shell at twenty five percent of H, uh, remaining HP. That's even worse. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. This is unfortunately going to take a little. This is going to take a hot second for uh, Scratch, unfortunately. But with both 
Cecil and Yang preserved, we're going to be able to go and have that sustained DPS. And Palum's up. Palum can go and throw out Quakes and Ice too, so that is going to go and help push through this damage threshold, but that is taking a bit longer. Tella also has Ice 3. Ice 3 is a great spell. Ice 3 is a great spell, but even at 3,000 damage, it's still only 500 above that 2,500 heal, so he's going to have to throw a bunch of them. Hopefully he has some ethers. Going to be able to... I mean, We've had one 2,500 heal, or two 2,500 heals so far, and we've been doing it over that. We're making progress in Kinazo. Antella does have all of their MP, so going to be able to just throw extra. And there is Kinazo. Scratch Dragon has gotten through this hook route and is making their way underground. An exception, like you said, you said it's it's one of the most difficult technical fights in the game. Scratch Dragon was able to get through it, even without a without the most ideal party. I think, I think that's that's cheers to him as a as a player of this game and, and, and worthy of being where he is in this tournament. Exactly, that is, Kanazo is a difficult technical fight when you have a great agility setup. When you have vanilla agility and. Let's be honest, all of your characters are slower than Cecil, so you are at a serious agility disadvantage. Getting through that fight is a significant feat. GG's the Scratch Dragon for doing that. Exactly where his mentality will be once he realizes where the magma key is, that might take a turn for the list, but right now he's probably feeling pretty great about himself. Yeah, getting through that fight, definitely something where you can think, all right, I got through it, I took a few wipes. Might be a little bit behind, but I'm not going to go and be that far behind. And then Fabul is going to go and punch him in the gut. Pankras getting the confirmation that this is the D-Machine grind. And it is. So he will be, he will be starting his grind here. Uh, did not check that sealed cave, so if you are if you're right about that check, uh, Baka, then even Pankras here could still be in a little little trouble. Yep, though no, maybe we'll just check that uh, spot afterwards because maybe that's not Wyvern, but maybe they're planning on killing off the Cecil as well because they did pick up a Yon. Maybe they're planning on just going off of Berserker strats, but we'll see. could be it i mean it's it's very difficult to control i mean unless you can unless your math unless you math good right <laughs> it's very difficult to control how much uh, how many levels that Cecil is going to exactly gain in this type of grind yeah that's uh you if you're looking at things like i want you to go and get palum nuke that's gonna be 20 some ish d machines i think so we are uh this will be in the low 50s no matter at, at that point no matter what yes All right, so I think the moment of truth is really coming. I mean, Scratch is gonna he's gonna get through that Asura very quickly, and we will see he will see his mistake, and it's gonna be interesting exactly what routing he decides to do in order to make up time. I'm morbidly curious as to Scratch Dragon. Why are you going into me in front of a bull? You get a full heal before you do this. I'm gonna yell at you for that because I know you you are a very good player. It took you have no idea how many seeds I, I did that before I before I drilled it into my head, uh, but I think I have it down now. It's definitely something that early players make that mistake a lot. It's very easy to go in. To be fair, not healing up before a spot when you need to heal up is a bigger mistake than healing up before a spot when you don't need to. I'm guilty of doing the former multiple times. Say going into Baron fight and discovering that hey, I need to go and. Oh, hey, look, Sogopo, this will be easy, and all my characters at 1 HP, oh dear. Yeah, that's a fun one. That's, uh, that's a bit of panic, all right. And this is sure is going to be... The real question is, just are we going to kill it in one shot or two? It looks like one shot. Just going to give Ashura a little bit of a virus, and even she can't heal herself from that fast enough. So we are through this Fabul fight. 
Scratch Dragon's going to get his bad news. Yep. Scratch Dragon is going to go and discover that he did a very unnecessary fight. Is taking it better than I expected, to be entirely honest, because I probably would have been standing there for a bit because I would be off screaming. I think I think in that situation I'd have to double check the tracker to, to make sure what I saw. So, I mean, Scratch Dragon could do the sealed cave here. That's certainly a place that can pop into my mind as some place where I might be able to make up time on my opponent. Could also maybe take on those Fame Archer bosses to get a little time, because that's something that Flight Runners typically save for after their first moon dive. I didn't I... Know what bosses were at Fame Archer? Did anybody check? They, yes, uh, Pancreas checked. They were Bygen and CPU, so. Oh boy. Not a set of bosses you're going to be able to pick up time on, unfortunately. And scratching into the news that Sheila 1 being the rat tail means he has to go and pick up his hovercraft movement and he's going to get the fantastic news that, hey, here's a ninja sword for a ninja you're not going to find. No, don't, don't be too negative, Baka. That ninja could be at the end of Giant. <laughs> I do believe I said fine, not existing to seed. <laughs> yes, you did. Uh, uh, yeah, that... Uh... Scratch Ring is now in, is just going to be looking for gambles to make and is going to be trying to take them as hard as they can. They can. And I wouldn't blame them. If... Yeah, I mean, but right now, the the path to the Darkness Crystal is pretty straightforward. I mean, maybe, maybe he could go up Tower before doing Dwarf Castle. That would save him a little bit of time. is going to the Fame Arch Freebie, which makes perfect sense. Might be going and trying to see if they can steal one of these Fame Arch fights, but even if you can take one of these fights early, I don't think you're saving time even if you win. Uh, I can... Yeah, chat pointing out that Scratch Dragon uh, did not take the time to drop the key um, on his way back to the underground. Probably going to do that later if he... But it's an easy easy one to forget. Um, it's probably going to go to Zeromus once, discover they don't have a crystal, and then go and drop the key, because I would probably do that. The Scratch might be more disciplined than me and actually remember these things. I'm not going to be able to pretend. Yeah, that, it's, uh, it's... You have to remember that those objectives are very specific. It is not open a path to the underworld. It is drop the key. Yep, and it's not even just get the key. It... Find it. And Pancras Kamikaze Cecil happily grinds his characters up to high levels and is anchoring with Cecil. Bravo. Gonna go and have a safer fight in the sealed cave. Yang is now level 59, so Yang is gonna go and be able to punch real good. Alum is level 52 and ha perfectly has Nuke and has a bunch of great spells. And I mean, Yang is going to be able to survive a couple of those big bangs before he's in trouble, so that wall will last probably probably long enough to, to take out Zeromus if the uh, if the reflex strats are good enough. I mean, with the lack of Cecil or, uh, or with the lack of weapons for Cecil, Yang can just punch Zeromus to death as well. Could, could do. Cecil might go and have higher agility. Cecil starts at 13 agility, but we do have Dwarf Axes and Drain Swords. We can probably bring him down to 10 or 11 agility. Yeah, there's and... also there's also remains the possibility that he's going to use a couple of Moon Bosses to get Cecil up to that 44, 45 and lock Zeromus at uh, RA2. We have a lot of options still. Yeah, there are options for Cecil. Scratch Dragon is opening up the Luki Cave. Or is Scratch Dragon going to do a bit of grinding, or is Scratch Dragon going to be going and diving this because he realizes things have not gone his way? Why not both? Very far, very fair. Yeah, so Scratch Dragon making, I think, making the good, he's making the smart play, uh, going to find out what key item and what boss remains here in the, in the Seal Cave. Yep, and... Hey, an elixir in there ain't too bad to find. 
X Pancras is going or Pancras is going and uh, gearing up their Yawn, giving them a strength ring and a black belt, and is going to be de equipping Cecil with just a dwarf axe. Yep, so Cecil is now officially in anchor mode. Yep, that way Cecil is level 26. Cecil has gone and gained some amount of agility. I would have to go and look up exactly uh, what his agility is at that level. It's over 20 uh, at, at the very least, so it's still it's still not ideal right now. Yeah, oh, oh, hey. Well, Cecil may not be taking a nap for this fight because... This is free if you let Cecil live. All right, well, Karate does not want to let Cecil live, but, you know. Hello, objective. Scratch Dragon, if he can get this Legend Sword out of here, will be in go mode. Buck, I don't know why they that uh, Pancras just didn't listen to you. I mean, you gave him the play. To be fair, I have burned myself very hard on this play, so that's why I remember it. I have lost the race <laughs> because I did I had a Luka key and went to the moon instead and did not check, and that is where something very important was. I now remember to go to Luka Cave. So, I, right, Pancras, I think the worst case for Pancras right now is that uh, that Earth Crystal is hiding someplace on the Earth, right? Maybe behind one of those Fae March bosses, and he's going to spend a lot of time hunting hunting these moon, these moon checks. I didn't see if he got through the uh, Bahamut fight from the entire the I saw a reset, but I didn't know notice if Pancras got there. But you're correct. Uh, Pancras is in is in a bit of trouble. Oh, but the Scratch Dragon is just getting torn up by this Leviathan, the high magic spot, doing a lot of mean things to Scratch Dragon's party. Uh, yeah, so uh, Pancras did get through the, the K value. K value was only a light sword, which Pancras chose to reset out of. So um, imagine, you know, still dedicated to to Dirt Cecil right now. Dirt yep. Nap Cecil. Dirt Nap Cecil is uh, pretty reasonable. Pancras coming out and saving. Going to be going back in. Although I am at the risk of sending hypocritical to my own advice, I wonder if going and not leveling up Cecil is becoming a bit of a burden at this point, because Cecil's fast enough to go and be even at over 20 agility, he's going to have a hard time going and make linear team be high relative agility, but fast enough to or low enough agility to still let other enemies be high relative agility. That could still be pretty dicey for Pancras. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that there is a there is a threshold that you need to walk. Like as so, as soon as Cecil gets past a certain level, you have to say, okay, we need to we need to get him to that uh, that magic twenty eight agility now. And he may, you know, twenty level twenty six may be past that threshold without a curse ring. Uh, I mean, with a dwarf axe, you take your characters up to fifty three, and. Going and throwing a life potion on Palom as Dark Knight Cecil gives a speech about justice, kind of takes some extra experience on Palom. While Scratch Dragon is going back to this Leviathan, is throwing out a cure to. I am not 100% certain what their plan is for Leviathan, but it's going to be very painful as. 1300 ice 2. That hurts a lot. Not a spit. Now you know this is the evil wall spot. Evil wall does not cast that many spells, but <laughs> that ice two is uh, is showing that this is not exactly a zero magic attack spot. <laughs> yes, this is a spot where uh, you evil wall has very high magic power. To be entirely honest, because he's using the was he used um, the stone, not stone, but the other stone right. spell, and he doesn't use weak. That's nope. level unless I'm thinking of, but definitely throwing out those stones and probably doesn't the programmers didn't want him to miss that. Yeah. Well, also, doing a little bit of research while uh, looking at the runners, Cecil level 26 only has 15 agility, so that dwarf axe brings him down to 10 agility. That's a good one. place. That's that's lower than level one. So, Ankrez is in a good spot with that agility on. You know? Yep, and to be relative agility 1, you need to go and be 26 agility or higher, which is doable for some of 
Pancras' characters. Yang is the main one who stands out. Rosa might be able to get there if we get even more levels, but... And Scratch Dragon is making use of the uh, vampires that they purchased earlier. I feel like Scratch Dragon is going to be through this fight very soon, but that might be... This spot does not have an exceptional amount of HP, and if you have a Star Veil up that can last long enough, that's gonna get you through this spot. Ooh, Pancras finding the Water Hag in the Ribbon Room. This is the freest of free bosses. Uh, assuming you can you can withstand those couple punches, it's gonna get in between the script, um, and uh, this will give Pancras access to two key item checks. And while we know it's not going to be the Legend Sword, Earth Crystal is still instant go mode for Pancras because they've trapped the Magma Key down the well, they've defeated the boss in this cave, they will have to go back to Earth, but you're going to stop outside of Toria, which is where you can use your pass. Meanwhile, Scratch Dragon is still pushing away at this Leviathan, going and throwing out life potions and vampires, just trying to get through this fight. Very fast spot. So you can't bring it fast. Pancras was so fast, I didn't even notice what items they got. I think I saw an assassin dagger in there. Assassin dagger and the uh, the the better dagger, the spoon. Aha. Speaking of sharp cutlery, Odin shows up with a very big sword. And Palum comes out with a very powerful spell. And Yan comes out with the best spell of all, Punjaga. <laughs> Our punch maze does a does a lot of work for this party. And that gold apple is not something that uh, we're happy to see. Hank has resetting out because, well. He doesn't need a spoon. He's already ground. Why spend more time when you can just reset and be back to full power? I mean, this is I mean, this is again why these flags are so interesting and these these matches have been so nail biting because Scratch Dragon going the completely wrong direction, taking on an incredibly rude fight. That's why. Uh, might be in go mode before Pancras, who's had a much easier time through this seed. Yep, and Pancras? Yeah, hi Wyvern. Gonna have to turn on Battle Speed to get through that, because... Ooh, what was that one's agility there? I think I saw it at 11. This one might be getting a couple of levels. Let's see. Probably got levels, probably got to experience on that Yang. Well, he's still 26, though. He's still 26. And, and, he, and Pancras reset out of the Yang, so... Yeah, if that's 11 agility, then you need to go and get over 28. Yang should be at that point, but the thing with Wyvern is you need a second character to follow it up, which is very, very important. You kind of... This is the inside how agility works. You need a second character to buffer your Q long enough to enter the Q to prevent Wyvern from being able to go and just immediately cast. Ooh. I think for the next tournament, Baka, I think you need to demand a Telestrator just so you can do all this math out so the, the chat can see. Yep. Pan Pancras, I believe, has Yang at relative agility 1, but Rosa is not high enough relative agility, and Rosa is the next highest person. The lack of a... If Earth Crystal's there, then that lack of a... Uh, Crystalline is really going to be hurting Pancras. Might need to go and take some ex take that Water Hag for extra experience just to get agility up high enough. Or hit some Lunar Chest in the hopes of finding a uh, Artemis Bow or something else to increase agility. Yeah, and Pancras' path to, to the Earth Crystal might not even be that straightforward. It could be that we pull a, we pull a Baron Key or a Tower Key from the Moon or Twin Harp. All of those, all those uh, key items are still out there, and any of them could be gating our required key item. Very true. I mean, we 
we haven't seen any chains really, except for the pan and the rat tail. You could totally have a Baron Key into the Tower Key, into Twin Heart, into an Earth Crystal. Or we could have an Earth Crystal out here just waiting to be found, but it could be behind that Wyvern, which is another issue. Scratch Dragon here, struggling against the Leviathan. I mean, I think, you know, he's got to, I mean, he's got to be super nervous. He, he knows he's behind because he found that Magma Key. But um, if he's having this much trouble, I mean, do you take a couple fights in the sealed cave to get a little bit more experience? Do you change, go shopping to change up your strategies? Like, what, what, what do you think would help him through this? Uh, extra star bells would be my starting point. To be entirely honest, you use a star bell. You just get a couple star bells off on at much anyone who's not Cecily Young because they have a lot of HP. Though they can go and get through it with the vampires. You throw the vampires to heal yourself up. And do your best to make uh, Leviathan kill themselves, to be entirely honest. Yeah, because, I mean, Scratch, I think when he took the Leviathan fight the first time, I think he had a real opportunity to catch up to Pancras. But now with this is the third attempt, um, and Pancras done with his moon checks, this is, it's, it's becoming, once again, a one-sided race. Pancras did skip a number of items on there, but might just be coming back to Sealed Cave because they found Wyvern. They know whatever is in Sealed Cave isn't going to be completely destroying them like uh, that Wyvern is going to. And Pancras is landing there and will be discovering there's a Legend Sword in this cave guarded behind the Leviathan. This is unfortunately looking very grim for Scratch Dragon. Yeah, Pancras doing this check here. Uh... Even even if Scratch Dragon gets through this Leviathan fight, he still needs needs a grind. So Pancras is gonna just gonna be in a in the in the preferred position. He's, he's gonna be ready for Z. Scratch Dragon could theoretically do twelve hundred H the Zilch twelve hundred HP strats, but they are still not gonna be as fast as Pancras walking through here, getting that legend sword, killing Leviathan with his moon level party, and just walking on Zeromus. Now, Baka, there is a reason why they're called 1200 HP Zilch strats. How, uh, many other, how many people other than Zilch has actually pulled them off? <laughs> I've seen some people do it. It's not me, but I do know they exist. And it is true. They were developed by our uh, community member Zilch, who has put in a lot of work of working on refining those, so... We will probably see them happen more and more as Zilt shows them off more and more in this tournament and reveal why they are such a scary part of this meta. Yeah, and if if they really don't exist and he made them up, then he's probably sweating right now. <laughs> his, his matches are coming up. <laughs> oh, I, I have seen uh, I have seen the twelve hundred HP strats. I do know that it is a real thing. It's a real thing. I don't. Well. I will do. Tw I will learn how to do 1200 HP strats before I learn how to do Eddie strats. But I'm lazy. And don't really like doing either of those things. The Eddie strats. The Eddie strats make me nervous, uh, just because of, of how much they rely on the perfect timing and how you could lose 15 minutes if you are just off by a couple, couple of clicks. I'm not picking Eddie strats because they also take 20 minutes if you do them very plainly. Absolutely correctly. Yeah. So we have two two nope ropes on our screen at the same time. This is this is not honestly what I expected when the scratch dragon first stood down here. And we see Yon just saying, "What does Th Thunderclaw say to the snake?" Shocking discoveries. Doesn't want to go and uh, deal with that. Just leaves. And hey, Pancras is now one turn away from go mode. Yeah, we'll see him take the slow warp path out of the sealed cave, head over to Kokol, and uh, and get his Excalibur reward. Uh, with our Excalibur, do we still leave Cecil down? Do you grind Cecil again? Because that's really he's level 26. He's not going to be able to do much. He might survive that first Big Bang. You might go and Zerk him up for the first one, but I yeah. think Cecil is going to be taking a nap for the Z fight. 
And if you even if you give him the give him the Excalibur to do a couple swings, he loses that agility uh, the agility penalty, and then he's he's back to being a uh, a problem for you instead of a benefit. That's actually so. If you go and keep the if you quit, go into the fight with the dwarf axe on, agility is set when the fight starts. If you change your agility mid fight, it doesn't change your relative agility. It doesn't turn change your turn order or anything. That is so that's you, good to know. Yeah, that's 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 smart. So you can go. This is very important if you go and accidentally overlevel your Cecil. If you take him up to level fifty three, he will have thirty three agility. Give him a dwarf axe. He goes down to 28 agility. Start your Z fight, swap out your Dwarf Axe for a Legend Sword or an Excalibur or whatever weapon you wish, and Cecil's Zeromus is still relative agility too. Pankra's finding Rune Axes, Power Shirts in that Cocoa Shop, buying at least one Power Shirt. Uh, a great weapon for our Yang, or, well, outfit for our Yang. Even more strength on the monk. Punch Mage has an appropriate wizard robe. The only thing that would give uh, Pankra a uh, better setup for Yang right here is if he trips over a Zeus Gauntlet on his way to the moon. Uh, I don't think Pankras is going to the moon. Pankras has the pass. Pankras has the piss the crystal. Pankras has a very express way to Zeromus without going back in that big whale. It's uh, the preferred way to get there. You don't have to walk through the lunar subterranean once again. And uh, yeah, we're... Pankras is getting there and saving has just thrown that extra shirt on. Yalong is giving... Hey, you got a power shirt for Cecil, so I think Cecil is going to go and use that Excalibur for as long as they can. And speaking of using some for as long as they can, I see some people going to throw out some Z-Flags in this uh, chat. What's that about? I don't know. Is there a, are they, Has a new country been founded? Something something starts with a Z? Well, I believe this might be a little bit of a throwback back to when uh, this was in flag titled Dash Z on the randomizer where... When, Zerom when you go into the Zeromus fight, you had the option you have the option of going and leaving him in his vanilla form, but why would you want to do that? This is a randomizer, so by default, we change how Zeromus looks. He can't go and join the normal boss pool because he's a bit too complicated, a bit too strong, and he really deserves to be locked up in this lunar prison, waiting for us at the end to go and just beat him in. But if we're going to take the same fight all the time, we don't have to do the same sprite every time, right? Absolutely not. We want to make we want to make this fight as interesting as possible, and we throw one more surprise in for our runners. And we ask this very important question at the end of each seed because of it. And that question is, whose butt are we gonna kick tonight? And we see the crystal getting thrown. Berserk is getting placed is getting cast on Gong. Cecil, I believe, is going to be swapping weapons, and Palom is probably going to throw up a star bell and start reflecting some nukes. Ooh, that is a uh, sprite. I don't know what that's from, but this is horrifying and awful. Scala? Scala starting this explanation with okay, so, so um, this is going to be a good one. This is ominous. Whenever I say wrinkliness. okay, okay, so, but Scratch Dragon speaking of which has gone and gotten their legend sword. I do know what Cookie Clicker is. <laughs> this is from Cookie Clicker. Oh my god! There is every type of sprite possible in this game. I, I, cookie clicker? I know <laughs> of it. I know what it is. It's a candy box. You click on the things. It's a bad game. I believe it's the epitome of the bad game, to be entirely honest, but uh, I've just about that yeah. there. But this thing is in that? Yes, All right. it is. All right. Final boss of Cookie Clicker, you gotta click on it. I don't know if that's true. I have... 
We just yeah. Scala, you broke Baka. This is <laughs> this is amazing. It's one thing to say the internet is a weird and terrifying place. It's a very different thing to go and see the reality of it pushed so clearly in front of your eyes. Scala clarifying, Baka, in case you're confused, that if you make the grandmas unhappy, they turn into scary monsters. Does that help you? No. No, unfortunately, I don't think it does. Is that what... We see that Palom reflect a nuke back onto Wrinkledness here, dealing, uh, dealing almost... 8,000 damage. Yang's punching for 3,500. Yang's punching for uh, Excalibur damage at this point. Scully, you've done a very good job with these sprites to really go and draw our attention away from the fact that Pancras is just absolutely going and roasting around this. Cecil is still alive. Cecil is going and throwing out damage, I think. But Yang is doing much more. Uh, Scratch Dragon right now is need... Well, actually, Scratch Dragon has a pass, still does not have a Darkness Crystal, so he is in go mode, but has ha does not have a grind right now. Um, we'll see what he does. Going over to the place where you normally pop Sirens, does he have one Siren? Yes, he has one, you get one Siren from Sheila from turning in the pan today. And... Meanwhile, Pancras is in Medio. This is, uh... Well, everyone else is down because the Big Bang came out, but Yang has 5,000 HP almost. Rose is at 1,400, and Yang has just simply gone and absolutely decimated, not quite destroyed, but has done horrible, horrible things to this even more horrible and awful monster from Cookie Clicker. And now we see the Crumble and Pancras has finished in first place beating Scratch Dragon. They have an official time of 1 hour, 28 minutes, and 43 seconds. GG to Pancras for winning this race. Yeah, it's, I mean, Pancras, he played this, uh, played this scene almost as well as, poss as it possibly could have. I mean, maybe he should have checked the seal cave a little earlier but otherwise was pretty was a pretty straightforward seed and uh and a well earned victory yes indeed that was uh that was quite the victory the moon may have been haunted we'll have to go and check the spoiler log for confirmation but all in all not what you wanted and scratch dragon is pulling out a classic old st school grind the door grind so we'll see if Pancras wants to join us, but uh, this is going to be a much closer race than I think that we believed when we first saw that chaos on the screen. So that's that's pretty exciting. Indeed, and we are joined by Pancras. GG, Pancras, on your win. How are you feeling right now? I incredibly relieved. <laughs> For the least. I super worried about a Wyvern softlock as soon as I saw it, and finding out that I had another way to get to go mode was just the best news I could have gotten today. That's, uh, that is very fair, because you did not have the option of going and doing anything but having single Cecil from what we could see. Uh, how desperate were you for a second Cecil, or were you desperate for something else? I spent a good amount of time around the early game looking for one as well as shopping for black swords or nude arrows after I had seen the Asura, thinking I don't hate a four Cecil start on these flags necessarily, but it's a lot better if I can find a second one. Um, when all of the checks turned out dry, including the extra hook route, the moon character, it just... it was a little worrying, but got through it. That's uh, that's very fair. That's definitely... I agree, it's terrifying to go and deal with that. Getting through it was definitely a big and important thing for you to do, and you did it quite well. Uh, how did you feel when you found out that the Legend Sword was sitting in the Luka Cave, in the Sealed Cave, behind that Luka Key you got from Baymarch? 
uh, cursing myself a bit. Like, right after my grind, I had thought, okay, maybe I should go and check Luka, just to make sure I don't have any non fame arch spots left on her. Because I know that the probability distribution favors the Mugurian applications a bit better. At least I think that's what I've been reading. Um, but I figured, eh, I need one item. There's seven checks on the moon. I'll head up there, top down, find one of the two I need, and then hit six whammies in a row. Yeah, you... You found a lot of unpleasant stuff there as well. And you... Go ahead. The bosses were very kind outside of the wyvern, but the key items, not so much. <laughs> yeah, not really getting much of anything from there. Did, did you actually keep anything from any of the fights that you did, or did you just say, all right, we're leaving? Nope, reset out of everything, I think. <laughs> uh, was it lightsaber, tiara, spoon, assassin, dagger, something else? Nothing, a samurai bow, nothing of consequence. What's fascinating about this is that means that that wyvern gated the earth crystal and either gated it directly or gated it behind a long chain. What If you uh, did get through that fight and got something like the tower key or the baron key, where would you have gone first? Um, probably... That's hard to say. It would depend a bit on which one I find. Uh, if it was Tower Key, I'd go down there and check that first, and then go to Luka while I'm in the neighborhood. If it was Baron Key, I'd do that and continue chasing the chain, because there would be two checks in Baron. That's definitely fair. Uh, Gundam Pilot, do you have any questions for Pancras? Oh, uh, yeah, so Pancras, you kept, uh, I mean, you kept you were at four characters for until you were ready to go do your grind. Was there a specific character you're looking to to pull out, or is that just something that you normally do on these flags? Um, it's very seed to seed. Like, I do really enjoy slingshotting somebody to ridiculous levels, especially a Yang or a Palum, uh, which were my two options for this seed. But a lot of it also depends on what gear I have, what when would I be stronger by taking another character, or can I survive with the ones I have? In this case, I had the first Palom and the Luka Key to get him to Quake, so I figured I'd be strong enough for the most part, and could greet and slingshot somebody later on. But I was holding out hope for an edge that seed, because I had two more zombies. <laughs> of course you know you were never going to get the edge when you went and had two swords for him waiting for you. You know, anytime you see Hanzo steal, Edge is not the seed. And uh, if you, if you, if it came down to it, and you had to fight that Wyvern, what, what would have been your approach to it? I knew that with the agility situation I had at that time, there was no way I could get anybody to RA one and get a Star Veil off. Like once I went in with the Battle Speed Six and got Mega Nuke to Oblivion, I knew that wasn't happening. I have to go tackle this from a different direction. My idea was either leave it and check everything else first, and if all of those come out empty, then hope for the best and maybe do a second grind just to get Yang the extra, I think, three points of agility he needed to be RA1. Yeah, Young, if you had, um, Cecil was at 11 agility, I believe? Oh, he was at 14, but you had a Dwarf Axe would bring him down to 9? He was at 19, Dwarf Axe brought him down to 14. Okay, I I was looking at a very different, at a very wrong chart, excuse me. So yeah, 14 agility, whew, that is harsh. Yeah, Need to go. It's close, but not quite. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a hard sell, and Yang is going to need a lot of experience to get up to that point. Did you consider going and just opening chests in hopes of getting a curse ring or an Artemis bow, to be entirely honest, or a heroin rope? I did think about that as well, um, but I knew that I had a few checks, like I had the Fame Arch checks, I had the Luka Key, I could go and check those first and hope for the best, because it was unlikely that Wyvern gated both ways to go. That makes a lot of sense. Well, is this your first match, or is this, uh... Yes, this is my first match, or at this stage. So you've gotten your first win on the table round so far. How are you feeling going into your next matches? Uh, no 
no less worried than I was going into this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've uh, been on a bit of a break from tourney races, so like last night the nerves started hitting, and then this morning when I woke up the nerves started hitting again, and <laughs> I know going against Scratch Dragon I'd have to bring my A game. Like, from what I... I'm still pretty new to the community, and I think he was popular. I uh, can't think of the right word, but he was around a lot before my time, and an old name in the community, so hearing how strong of a player he was, I couldn't take any silly gambles like slingshotting that second pal when I knew Val Ballas was still out there. That was a question I didn't mean to ask, and thank you for answering for it preemptively. And to clarify some, to, uh, yep, Scratch Dragon was a, I believe he was one of the top 16 of the first High Witch of the Zenith Zone as well, so definitely a venerated name around here, definitely the old blood to, uh, Going on taking him down is always fun to see new people come in and make deep pushes into this tournament. I definitely I'm looking forward to seeing how things go for your next races because I think you definitely have what it takes to go and push on towards that uh, table stage. Oh, I'm hoping so. Otherwise, my bracketology will be a bit messed up. <laughs> always good to never bet against yourself in that bracketology, so I wish you the best of luck with that as well. Gundam, do you have any final questions? No, no final questions from me. This was uh, it was exceptional showing, and uh, best of luck in the rest of the tournament. Thank you. I'll look forward to watching the VOD and hearing exactly where I messed up and <laughs> <laughs> where to improve on. I think you'll you'll definitely find this VOD interesting, to say the least. There's a lot to see here. Uh, one last question before you go. When is your next race? Uh, my next race is this Friday versus Judge and Phineas at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Sounds exciting. Oh, well, yeah. best of luck to you then. Thank you, thank you. Good luck with all of your upcoming matches as well. Thank you. I uh, will be going through a number of them soon. <laughs> Have a great evening, and congratulations again on your victory. Thank you. You as well. And that was our winner, Pancras. They have gone and secured their first win in this tournament, and we'll be looking forward to seeing more from them. And also, they have gone and left us music. Yeah, so we'll we'll enjoy some music while uh, while Scratch Dragon finishes up their door grind. All in all, this has been a very rude scene. Scratch Dragon is, does have a level 44 Cecil. That's theoretically enough to go and go to Zeromus with that Excalibur that you have, so we are going to probably see a Zeromus fight out of Scratch Dragon shortly. Well, and I think Pancras, uh, Pancras might have uh, ended his stream because we did not get the, uh, get the music. I was fortunate, but we, we at least did get to see that it was Hurry from Final Fantasy VII. Yep, and uh, I was watching the spoiler log pretty, pretty closely there. I think I missed the very first part of it, but the Earth Crystal is behind. Um, it was behind the tower key in the cannon room. I do not know where the the tower key was. Though. I missed it. Hmm. But uh, that means that if you. We're trying to get that Earth Crystal. You were going on a key item. You were going through extra key items. Yep, I know. It's uh, the Fey March bosses are gating the uh, the Twin Harp and the Baron key, and uh, the King of Baron is only holding a package. So it could very well be that the Tower key is behind that Wyvern, and I just missed it on the spoiler log. Sounds entirely plausible. And Scratch Dragon is going to go and drop off their Magma key now because. This is the mistake I would make. I would totally forget to drop off this magma key, go to Zoramus, and wonder where the heck my crystal was. But uh, Scratch Dragon going and completing objective number two and getting their crystal. They're going to be heading into Zoramus shortly. They definitely have a much lower level team than uh, Pancras. Also, we're getting the nice text of, uh, well, that's gone. Scratch Dragon gets his crystal. 
we get a we get a reprise of uh, of your new favorite sprite, Baka. Yes, yes, the sprite that is. I know I'm not sleeping tonight. I don't know about the rest of you, but hey. <laughs> All the time I'm going to spend not sleeping means I have more time for free enterprise, right? Absolutely, get a couple of those uh, of those extra table seeds in for practice. Or I could just watch other people play because we have a lot of people uh, running seats tonight. As I, we have another race going on RPG Limit Break. There, are, we have more races coming up as well. So stick around if you like free enterprise. We're not done yet. Yeah, I believe that we'll be going over. Uh, we'll be going over after uh, after Scratch Dragons finishing up. That uh, the champion of the Fabul Gauntlet is uh, is doing his first table race tonight. So definitely stick around and see that. Champion of the Fabul Gauntlet is doing their first official race since they won the Fabul Gauntlet as well against their first opponent and from the bracket phase of uh, the Fabul Gauntlet PK forty seven eighty seven. Definitely going to be exciting. So, yeah, it is techni technically a rematch from the football gauntlet. Uh, PK PK's uh, PK was eliminated by Invenerable in the uh, in the round of thirty two of the football gauntlet. So that's uh, that's something to go and look forward to. Here in Scratch Dragon, getting into this Roma's fight has. Palom's not doing much this fight. Rosa has scary HP, but this isn't an undoable fight. Zoromus' true colors emerging. I usually say we give him a makeover because he's pretty ugly, but this is not an improvement in my book. This is horrifying. Gee, you know, I kind of forgot how bad it was, but now it's now that it's back, <laughs> it's pretty it's just terrible. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, so Scratch Dragon throwing a silk web, gonna uh gonna nerf that initial big bang uh ooh, the nuke here on palom is not ideal uh, and palom's not gonna survive that so that that's a big disadvantage early on i here's here are my thoughts on this palom's not doing anything this fight palom's the best thing palom's going to do is be eating up cure for healing potency so seems fine for palom to go and eat that counter nuke because Kelly can berserk Rosa's throwing a Berserk and just wants to be in position to throw a Cure 4 as soon as possible. Though it's going to need to Berserk Yang up as well because Tell is going to go down. Yep. Yeah, I think you you are definitely right. I mean, Cecil is awake here on Scratch Dragon's uh, fight. He's got that Excalibur. He's swinging for 4,000 damage, 4,500 damage. Uh, we probably don't even need a nuke in this, uh, in this setup. No, and because Scratch Dragon didn't get the Darkness Crystal, which is on top of the Keyless Tower, that, uh... Scratch Dragon had a lot fewer options for experience. He didn't even have 10 key items, which is pretty important if you want to go and do a big door grind. Yeah, door grind without 10 key items, you're only getting, you're getting under 40,000 experience, even, uh, even when that, uh, the Manticore comes out. Yep, and... Ooh, ooh, that's that's not good. That Big Bang just took down Rosa, and Cecil's on the ropes. Black Hole's coming out. Gonna be able to get Rosa up, but this is gonna be a harsh fight because Rosa's gonna need to cure four, get the team going again, and try and find time for Berserk, which is gonna be very difficult with this uh, agility setup because Rosa is not gonna be close to the speeds of Romus is. There's a shake. Is Rosa going to be able to get a Cure 4 off in time? No. Scratch Dragon takes the reset. And I do believe 
Scratch Dragon has forfeited room. Highly understandable, because let's be honest, Scratch Dragon had lost when he was grinding, and to go and win this, he needs to go do more grinding. This is not going to be a good fight for Scratch Dragon. Very understandable. Yeah, I, you know, by pushing through two tough bosses, the the Kenatsu and then the Leviathan with the with the levels he had, but uh, you know the door grind is not the most optimal grind, so just couldn't couldn't get enough levels here at the end. Yep, but Scratch Dragon is joining us. GG's on your race, Scratch Dragon. You caught a really rough break there. I played myself. <laughs> it was it was a. Uh... It was a needlessly rough seed what I did to myself this time around. <laughs> I was really rooting for you to just be checking a shop, checking a character, checking treasures, and then we saw that not only were you going down the hook route, it was a Kenazo at hook with a vanilla agility Cecil. That... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a fight all right. That That's awful. Yeah, I, I I really did play myself at the point where I saw Kinazo and I was there like, all right, I'm just committing to this. I'm gonna I'm gonna bank on that. There's nothing behind. There's nothing behind of Fabul. So when I finished it, and I went there and I said, okay, I can go back. I can clear Fabul now. I can clear it super easy. And then I saw the magma key. I got super demoralized and said, all right, time to go do something i guess found legend behind behind luca and i was there like all right maybe this is the wild card that can get me forward no that's a leviathan <laughs> yeah you the leviathan there was extremely any mage boss there is extremely rude but leviathan with vanilla agility still is just another crushing boss yeah if it was any regular mage boss i could have cleared it relatively easily because i had the star veil but nope Waves just kill you. Waves kill you way too fast. Yep. No, that, uh... You did get through. You didn't need to go and take additional grinding. You did get that fight. It just took you a bit of extra tries and tries you were fine, which was unfortunate. You were the first one to find the Legend Sword because Pancras found the Darkness Crystal on top of Keyless Tower and went to the moon without checking the sealed cave. But then they did their grind cleared out most of the moon except for a wyvern who they were not able to deal with and then came back and yeah. the moon wyvern gated the only thing on the moon as well which is another unfortunate thing for you just because that meant pancras has a few places to go let's go to sealed cave first which is where you went and that was definitely agree that was your best play you went and took your position you leveraged it the best you could and you made the best decision you could and it was starting to pay out for you. It just... The siege was needlessly cruel to you. Uh, a little bit. I was needlessly cruel to myself. Um, The one glaring mistake I made in the siege was when I went back to Fabul, I didn't stop to buy um, Star Veils. Ah. If I had bought the Star Veils then, I would have been okay because I had the grip of vampires and I wouldn't have struggled so much with Leviathan. But like I said, I got so demoralized by... by um. Kenazo and finding the magma key I just I wasn't thinking straight but at that point after the first attempt on um on Big Z I said you know what you'll try it once if not then it wasn't meant to be and we'll reset for tomorrow because I have I have a lot of races to do yeah that that is a very good approach just say all right we're done gonna go and cut yeah. this off and get ready for the next one that is definitely that is definitely a very yeah. good and respectable position to take. Yeah. When when things like that happen, I just say, you know what? You took the gamble that this one time, which is usually going to be that one time, that if if it's the magma key behind here, then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fall behind and lose. But for for doing it the hard way, I I, I don't feel bad too bad behind it. It's just Leviathan got me. Yeah, you. The magma keeping at Fabul was definitely a super troll for you because that's that is the only thing that goes and really puts you that far behind. Even Wait. Leviathan was a Leviathan's rude, but 
it's going to be harsh to deal with unless you've taken moon levels and you've skipped it and you correctly assess that that was a good place to go and you were making the best of it you played you played from your position exceptionally well it just did not go your way today yeah it's it's fine we'll reset we got we one neck was saved today but we'll take another neck tomorrow we got inven tomorrow so inven or coffee and chocobos i believe it was no i have inven on friday okay i have three races over the next three days all right i don't remember which ones are which he just got a nice axe that he just keeps going in. Yeah, I have tomorrow at 6. I believe I have Friday at 6 as well. I'm 6 or 5.30 and then Saturday at 9 in the morning. So Lots of, lots of races coming up for you. You've got, yeah, you've got a stacked week of racing, so... Yep, lots. I got I got a lot to do, but we'll reset from today. We'll move forward. Did we check Jobdorf? Because I think I was so far behind, I didn't even stop to check it. <laughs> we did yes. check Jobdorf, yep. Yeah. What, what what educational what psych psychiatrist. I could use a psychiatrist right now. <laughs> <laughs> that scene was definitely, uh, I can consider that a traumatizing experience as well. That wasn't that bad. There's been, at, at least it wasn't Evil Wall at, um, <laughs> at that spot. That would have just... Like, I had the ideal party. I was in a good position. It just ended up being that the one thing that could have gone wrong went wrong, which was Magna Key. Yeah. R rather unfortunate, but what can you do? You 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 just you suffer through those seeds, and then you bounce back, make the correct um, decisions for the next one, and hope for the best. Sounds like a great approach to take. Well, Gundam, do you have any final questions for Scratch Dragon? No, no final questions for Scratch Dragon. I just want to congratulate him on a tough fight. Um, it ended up being a lot closer than uh, than I think any of us would have guessed. Worth worth watching back for you. And uh, you've got a couple tough races coming up, so we wish you the best of luck. Uh, thank you, thank you. And I just before I go, I want to thank the restreamer, the tracker, our commentators, and frankly, the entire community. This is this has been a fun tournament so far, and um. Anyone who doesn't play this game, play this game. It's the best art oh, rando in ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to second that. This is a great rando. And if you haven't gone and uh, given it a try, feel free to stop by our Discord if you want to go and uh, see more about this. It is right. a... We are very friendly over there, and uh, there's tons of players who are willing to help new, new players out. We have cookies. That too. We, our, our bot gives cookies. Well, we'll let you go. Thank you again for joining us, Scratch Dragon. Great race. Looking forward to your races coming up in the next few days. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And that will be the end of this race. Thank you again to Aliseal for going and being the restreamer, Chazman89 for tracking, and my co-commentator, Gundam Pilot Spaz. Thank, thank you, you Baka. Yeah, thank you, Baka. It's always a pleasure. And with that... I believe we are going to be sending you off to Random Mania 1, where, or Random Mania, where we are going to be seeing a race just getting started. And no spoilers for the people who have watched this, uh, for who are watching the new race on Random Mania. Feel free to let them know it's a great one, just don't let them know how it ended. Have a great evening. Thanks.